Like if I was a snake, I would definitely be curled up underneath these leaves. Oh, wow. Dude is not happy that we're here. Don't let me get away. Here you go. You got him? Oh, God. Where is he? He's right there. He's right there. He's right there. He's right there. Right there. Right there. Get Where? him. Get him. I don't see What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Colin J. And today we brought you along with us on another herping adventure in pursuit of probably your least favorite snake on planet Earth, the water moccasin. <gasps> and today to help us catch these snakes, we brought some tools along with us. First tool, some snake tongs. And the other tool, Jay's got snake hook. a snake hook. These are going to keep us safe and out of harm's way, hopefully. I mean, we're trekking in an environment where they blend in very easily. So we're going to have our eyes peeled. Everywhere we look, every step, we're gonna make sure we're stepping not on a snake, and hopefully we can find one of those snakes for you today. That's the goal, catch a water moccasin, because I know you guys love that. I know you guys love these kind of videos. So let's start trampling around out here in the swamp, and let's see what we can find. Got your eyes out, Jay? Eyes open. Eyes open. Be very careful. Very careful. Let's go, guys. There could literally be a snake anywhere in this swamp. We have found a really nice spot that stands out to us where we're gonna look really hard and see if we can find one here. Um, let me turn this camera on and show you guys what we're looking at. So as you can see, we have the main creek that's flowing back here in the woods. And then right out here in front of us, there's like an island. And then there's a bunch of logs, a bunch of cover, and then there's a big mud flat. Moccasins love mud. There's a ton of frogs hopping around right here. So there could literally be a snake anywhere hanging out right here. So we're gonna look around you know, keep our eyes peeled, flip over a couple logs and see if we can find a snake in this one spot right here. Okay, so I got my hook. I'm gonna kind of just move some stuff around. See if we can uncover something. There could be a snake coiled up anywhere. And I hate to step on, there's a frog jumping out everywhere too. So I'm gonna hop on this log. It's actually starting to rain, which could be good. It might bring the snakes out of their little hidey holes, make them uncomfortable. Okay, I don't see anything on this mud flat. Let's walk across this log. Oh God. Oh man, did you hear that? Dang, it's storming. Like if I was a snake, I would definitely be curled up underneath these leaves. You see anything in here, guys? Don't see anything. Looks like there's nothing right here on this island, so we're just gonna keep moving upwards. We're gonna pay attention to the storm too. We don't get caught out here if it's gonna start lightning and doing dumb stuff. Go guys we just spotted our first snake you got this oh pool of water gosh. right here and dude he looks he looks mean we we'll get him you got him we we'll get him go we'll get him don't let me get away here you go you got him oh god where is he he's right there he's right there he's right there he's right there right there right there get him where? get him i don't oh you got, him? Ah! you got him oh my gosh yes oh what were you doing snake he almost got away <laughs> once he got in that muddy water i could not oh, he's, see he's him he's feisty Oh, oh wow, he's trying to bite the camera. <laughs> Dang. Good catch, Jay. <sighs> okay, so we said that we were coming out here to look for venomous snakes, and I just jumped in the water and I grabbed this snake. But this is not a venomous snake. Yeah, it looks just like it. I mean, if you weren't <sighs> trained in snake ID, you would automatically assume that this was a venomous cottonmouth, but it is not. This is 
a non-venomous water snake. In particular, this is the broad-banded water snake, Nerodia fasciata. And this dude is beautiful. Wow. So beautiful. Oh, wow. We both thought we had found the snake we were after when we first saw it. Yeah. He was going across the mud just perfect like, and we're like, yes, we got our snake. <laughs> But no, this is a different species, but hey, I'm down with it. I'm excited about it. Did you see him strike at me? Yeah, he struck at you like, hardcore. I, right before I missed him, he like struck up and was like, oh gosh. <laughs> okay, it seems like you got the snake under control. So now what we're going to do, I guess, is we're going to tell you guys how we know that this is a non-venomous broad-banded water snake and what to look for in IDing this snake versus a cotton mouth. Oh, don't let it bite you. Don't ya. bite me. Don't bite her. <laughs> Golly, guys, this snake will not leave the camera mic alone. <laughs> he is after it. This guy is so defensive, so aggressive. Ooh. Okay, so Jay has got this beautiful snake secured now. What you are looking at is the broad-banded water snake, Nerodia fasciata. And this dude is beautiful. And like we mentioned, look at the coloration of this, guys. If you didn't know that this was a non-venomous water snake, you would immediately, at first glance, think that this was a cottonmouth. Jay and I have a ton of experience catching water snakes and cottonmouth, so we knew exactly what to look for whenever we're catching this species. Check out the dorsal coloration of this snake. This guy is a beauty, and you can tell right off how it gets the name broad-banded water snake. Um, when you look at the patterns, you can see those beautiful orange bands going along the dorsum. Uh, this snake is just stunning. It's one of my favorite water snake species to find just because they're so beautiful. But these patterns look very similar to that of a cottonmouth, and at first glance, you could definitely get the two mixed up. Um, one thing I like to look at on this snake in particular is its head. When you look at its head, it's really a bright orange color. Um, you're not going to see many cottonmouth with a bright orange colored head. I've never seen one with this bright of an orange coloration on it. So this is a good, in a way, to, you know, at first glance, differentiate the two species of snake. So this guy at rest has a pretty round head. He doesn't have those big venom sacs making it all broad shaped and cottonmouth has an angled head it's big fat it's venom sacs right behind his eyes which okay, so the next thing we're looking at is if you see his eyeball and you see his nostril if this was a cottonmouth there would be an additional hole between those two body parts and that is called the heat sensing pit cottonmouth are pit vipers this snake is not a pit viper so he does not have a heat sensing pit also while we're looking at his face we can tell by his eyes that he is not a cottonmouth this snake, like all other non-venomous water snakes here, has a round pupil, whereas the cottonmouth would have a vertical pupil. Okay, so there's one more key characteristic that can help you identify this species of water snake from the other water snakes in the area, and that is if you flip him over, check out his belly. See how his belly is this really awesome orange color? And then he has these really dark, kind of coppery orange checkerboard patterns going along with it. This is very unique to this species of snake, and no other water snake species in the south has this checkerboard pattern. So if you have a snake, you know it's not venomous and you can't tell what it is, flip it over. If it has an orange belly with these dark copper checkerboard pattern, it is a broad-banded water snake. And this guy is awesome. And as charming as the snake is, we are in the middle of the swamp and we are getting absolutely destroyed by mosquitoes. Yes. So our cottonmouth mission has unfortunately going to be cut short, but we are very excited that we caught this broad-banded water snake for you guys today. We hope you guys enjoy it. So let's get this snake back in the water and uh, let's send him on and we'll get out of here. We spent a long time trying to find this snake and it's starting to get late and we do not want to be caught out in the swamp whenever it gets dark. So we're going to let this guy go and we're going to get the heck out of here. Good job, Jay. Oh, that was an sound. awesome find. Now let's get out here before we get snake bit. <laughs> We're back. You guys didn't think we'd give up that easily on finding a cottonmouth, did you? We decided to come back out here and give it one last shot to see if we can catch cottonmouth for today's episode. So we're going to walk around here in the woods. We had a little bit of a rain shower um, just a little bit ago, and I think that might have got the snake stirred up a little bit. Might have got him out of the little hidey holes. So it might get a little bit easier for us to find one. So we're just going to walk around in a different area in the same swamp than we did yesterday and hopefully find one for you guys. You ready to go? I'm ready. I'm feeling good I about this one. one. Everything looks looks snaky, so it's good. Okay, let's get back there and see if we can find one. Okay, we're getting wet today. I'll make sure you don't step on nothing, okay? Oh my gosh, Jay. 
Look at the end of that log right there. Can you see him? You see that? <gasps> Look at that. No way. <laughs> that didn't take long. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We've literally taken, I don't know. We're, we're like 15 yards into the swamp. And guys, we have our eyes on the snake we've been after for two days now. And he's a good looking one. Dang, look at how good that snake blends in. Oh my gosh, that's a good spot, Cole. Yeah, I mean, that's usually how cottonmouth look when you find them. They look like little, like little, uh, like little cow patties just in the middle of the swamp. You're like, what's that doing here? And uh, man, he is beautiful. You can definitely tell that this is a cottonmouth because he's got that big, broad, angle-shaped head with those big denim sacks. Got those big, rough keeled scales. Got like a black tail, highly keeled scales. Got that raised scales above his eye where you can't see his eyes from the top portion of him. He's probably a two foot snake. And he's just still, he's just chilling. He knows we're here. He can sense us with his heat sensing pit. And I think that this snake is just hoping that we don't see him because he doesn't want to be messed with. But we definitely see you, buddy. We're not going to hurt you, but we are going to get a close look at you. We are going to catch you. All right, guys, he's showing out. This guy is telling us why he gets the name Cottonmouth. As you can see, he's gaping, his mouth wide open. You can see how it's that really white, cottony color. Hence the name Cottonmouth. This is a warning sign saying, hey, don't mess with me, don't get any closer. I am venomous, I will hurt you. Now, if that's not intimidating, I don't know what it is. Always oh, rattling his tail a little bit. And you can tell he's inflating himself, trying to make himself look as big as possible. As he thinks I'm a predator. He thinks that I mean trouble. Oh, wow. Dude is not happy that we're here. Okay guys, we are so excited that we were actually able to find a cottonmouth for you guys today. And now while he's right there and getting ready, we are about to catch the snake for you. And before I go into the catching process, I just wanna let you guys know, I do not want any of you guys to ever try this at home, okay? I've been doing this for a long time. I've caught hundreds and hundreds of venomous snakes. And every time I catch them, I'm putting myself at risk. And I do not want you guys to ever be at risk. The best thing for you to do if you're ever in this situation, like if you see a cottonmouth in the wild, is to just let it be. Just let it sit right there. Go the other way, it's not gonna harm you. If you go to try to kill it, there's a chance that you could get bitten by it. So I just want you guys to just know that this is a dangerous thing we're about to do, but I'm doing it for you guys, so I want you to be able to see the snake up close. And I've got tools. Which one should I use, the tongs or the hook? Uh, what do you maybe think? start with the tongs. Start with the tongs? We'll get yeah. the tongs, okay? We're gonna be very safe, we're gonna be very cautious. These tongs, I have them wrapped with some tape on here. They have like some grooves on there. I don't wanna harm the snake. It's not gonna harm the snake at all when I pick it up. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. He's ready to be a star. Oh my gosh, that dude is ticked. He is not happy. Okay. Oof. All right, buddy. I'm gonna slide this one underneath you. Gently. And we got you. Okay. I know you hate this. And we've got him. Okay, so guys, what we are looking at is a northern cottonmouth. This is a Keystradon, Pisivorus, Leucostoma. And then these guys are pit vipers. They belong in the viper family, Viperidae, and they are awesome, okay? This is probably one of your worst nightmares in real life right here. Um, but I can assure you that these guys are just completely misunderstood species. While yes, they are venomous and they are toxic to us, they have a really strong hemotoxic venom. Um, these guys are not out to hurt you. These are not snakes that are wanting to strike and attack humans. Uh, most bites occur whenever you accidentally step on them because they blend in so well with their environment. Um, as you can see out here, this is a perfect environment for them. He was blending in very well. And um, that's the only way that people normally get bitten by these species or when they're trying to catch them like we were today or when they're trying to kill them. So as long as you're not trying to catch one or if you don't accidentally step on one, you should never be bitten by this species of snake. Now something that I love about this species is the coloration of it. They always have these really beautiful banding patterns on their back which fade down to like a really dark black tipped tail and I think it's just awesome. Also their head design is really cool and if you look like on their upper lip they have that white stripe. This one has a white stripe doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Okay most of them do. <laughs> That's the one way you can identify this snake from other um, water snakes. They have that white lip. Um, another thing you can look at um, as far as identifying this species from other species of water snakes, if you're trying to differentiate between the two, um, you can see it has scales above its eye, and um, normal non-venomous water snakes in the state do not have that. Um, if you're looking at this snake from a bird's eye view, looking down, you can't see the snake's eyes. As if you were looking at a water snake head from a bird's eye view down, you can see its eyes from the side, which is pretty cool. 
Something else we'll take a look at, and this, his tongue is flickering right now, he's getting a sense of his surroundings. If you look between his eyeball and his nostril, you'll see another hole. That is the snake's heat sensing pit. So what the snake was doing when we first walked up on he was all coiled up, just blending in with the surroundings, and what he was doing, most likely, was waiting for some sort of prey item to walk by. Whether that is a frog, or a fish, or a small mammal. So they're not going to use a heat sensing pit really for a fish or a frog, but if a, if a small rat were to walk by, he'd be able to sense it and he'd be able to reach out, inject some venom into it, and then consume it later. And cottonmouth will eat just about anything. They're true garbage disposals. They'll eat fish, frogs, dead meat, I mean like dead fish, um, and all sorts of warm-blooded prey, birds, rats, whatever they can get their mouths around, they'll eat it. Now as far as size goes, this is about a two foot long individual. Um, it's pretty average. We find a ton of cottonmouth about this same size, um, but they can reach a length in Arkansas around four feet long. That's, about the, that's the largest recorded size, I think, as far as I know of, uh, about four feet long. Um, there's been reports elsewhere in the country of cottonmouth reaching a five, six feet, length, six feet in length. That would be a massive snake. I've never seen one that big. That'd be crazy to see one that big. Now as far as their preferred environment, these guys will live just about anywhere that's adjacent or near to water. Um, we're in a perfect area right now, we're in a, we're in a low bottomland swamp, there's tons of water, tons of prey. Um, but you can also find these guys around lakes, around ponds, around rivers. I mean, like I said, just about anywhere that has water, a little roadside ditch, anywhere that has water and available food for them to eat, they will go and they will live there and they will thrive there. Another interesting and cool fact about the cottonmouth is that it is viviparous, which means that they have live birth. Um, the young of the snake look very similar to the adults. They're kind of a lighter color, and most of the time when they're juveniles, they'll have like a chartreuse colored tip to their tail. They kind of use that as like a lure. They'll use that tip tail to like lure frogs and um, lizards and small um, prey items to them so they can reach out and get them. It's a pretty cool little strategy, but they grow out of it. As you can see, this snake has a really dark black tail now. As you can see right now, this snake is kind of flattened out. If you look at his belly, he has those really wide and long ventral scales. This kind of helps him stay afloat on top of the water. I know that. People think that you can compare um, a water snake versus a cottonmouth based on how high they sit in the water when they're swimming. Um, Non-venomous water snakes swim pretty high up on the water too, um, but these guys are a lot more buoyant just because they have those flat, um, long ventral scales. All right, so I think that's all the interesting fun facts I can come up with off the top of my head in regards to this cottonmouth. We are so thrilled we were able to come out here and find one of these. It's glad, I'm, I mean, we're so glad we came out here and we're glad that it only took like 10 minutes to find him. It didn't even take 10 minutes, it took like five minutes to find him. Anyways, I think we're gonna let him go back into his domain, let him get back to hunting fish and frogs or whatever he was doing, and uh, we're gonna get out of here. So, man, this is amazing. He's an awesome yeah. looking snake. All right, it's time to let our buddy go. We're starting to lose light. We don't wanna get caught out here again with a low light situation. There's gonna be a bunch more cottonmouth coming out. So we're going to send him back into the swamp and let him get after some frogs tonight. You deserve a big old bullfrog tonight. Okay, we made it out of the swamp, safe and sound, two days in a row, That's and man, two. we were so pumped that we found a cotton mouth for y'all. Yeah, and it's easy to see how, like after yesterday catching that broadband of water snake, how easy it is to get those two snake species mixed up because they look so similar. Um, hopefully, we could clarify some of the differences with you guys today, and I hope you guys enjoy watching us, you know, walk around this sketchy, snaky terrain <laughs> and catch these snakes for you guys today. If you did, be sure to hit the like button for us, and if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you can keep up all of our future outdoor and herping adventures. We're Colin and Jay, and we will see you on the next video. Bye, guys. And remember, kids, do not go out in the swamp by yourself and go catch snakes. It's not good for you. It's not safe. Don't do it. I told you so. Don't do it. We'll see you later.